The billionaires at Davos protect themselves from COVID-19 while declaring the pandemic over for working people. Hey there, my name is James Lee. Welcome to my channel 5149 where I talk business, politics, society, and today let's explore the ruling class. What do they think about regular people? Do we even exist to them? These are the images that are coming out of the World Economic Forum. First off, they're testing you right at the door. If you test positive for COVID, your bracelet gets deactivated. There are HEPA filters in every room and people are wearing jackets because they have the windows open. And look at that. Masks. And you all are sitting up here talking about, we're going to set up guillotines for the rich and the powerful. They already set up guillotines and you walked right towards them. I don't actually know what the heck is going on with COVID because the media makes it very difficult for us. For example, this article in Politico. COVID cases, hospitalizations spike as new variant gains foothold. And then you read on and it says, quote, though COVID hospitalizations appear to be on the rise nationwide, experts don't project this Omicron subvariant alone to cause a spike. Forecasts from early data suggest they'll remain fairly steady. Like what the heck, man? My point is while we are still arguing amongst ourselves about the pandemic, is it serious, is it not? Look at that idiot not masking or that COVIDian double masking. The ruling elites, they've already taken the problem completely off the table for them with sci-fi type technology like far UVC lighting that kills pathogens in the air. They're like, you guys keep bickering. We don't care. We're just going to get rid of it for ourselves. Case in point, check out this Axios article, what was in at Davos and what was out and the first bullet in out. COVID, what? There was little talk of the pandemic. I know, for a lot of people, the pandemic is already in the rear view mirror regardless, and many don't think about it at all, but the disease is still here in some form. But for them, the elites, the pandemic is not only psychologically out of their mind, it's also just physically not even existing at all. Essentially, they do not live in the same world as the rest of us, which by definition means that for the most part, we are invisible to them. And when you stop and think about it, it's pretty extraordinary that we select group of human beings because of whatever touched us at some point in our lives are able to sit in a room and come together and um, actually talk about saving the planet. I mean, it's so almost extraterrestrial to think about. You see, straight from the horse's mouth, they are otherworldly. They've been touched and blessed with extraterrestrial powers. So silly. Whether or not you've seen Mad Men, you may have seen this image, but essentially like the guy on the top is like all of us, normal people. And the guy on the bottom is Don Draper, but also is kind of like the ruling elite. So the political class, the capitalist class, the wealthy people, the people who control every company, the people who basically fund all the politicians. Like rich people don't take public transit. They don't have their kids in public schools. They have live-in nannies. They don't worry about the grocery bills. Like everything that we go through, they don't understand. They've never experienced what rich people do experience, the ruling class do experience, is paying taxes for services that they don't use, right? Which obviously means that they're usually against paying taxes. They're also, you know, worried about things that prevent their companies from being profitable. So like environmental regulations, uh, any sort of worker labor uh, regulations. Not something you will hear too often on corporate media, but it's the truth. One of the only points of intersection between the ruling class and the working class are these instances where the financial interest of the ruling class is under some type of threat from an action the working class is collectively taking. Take the vaccine debate as an example. They desperately want to shut down any public discussion weighing the pros and cons of pharmaceutical intervention, not because they fear conspiracies. They actually love to entertain conspiracy theories. A lot of people have been asking about that, about black holes and on and on and on and all of these conspiracy theories. Let's look at this. Uh, Noah says, what else can you think about? Black hole, Bermuda Triangle. And then Deji says, huh, just like the movie Lost. I know it's preposterous, but it, is it preposterous, you think, Mary? <laughs> that was my reaction exactly. Don Lemon, CNN, they conjectured on and on about MH370 for weeks without presenting any factual evidence because 
there was no factual evidence available, which is fine, I guess. But back to the point I was making, it's not conspiracy theories that they're against. It's conspiracy theories that would threaten the financial interests of the ruling elite, which is why in the past couple of years, serious debate about the potential side effects of a Pfizer or a Moderna jab was considered more or less a third rail. The extent of this misinformation when it, came, when it comes to vaccination, I think has, as a, somebody who works in the media, I, I mean, that was just overwhelming to see all of that across all the channels, right? So I've said, you know, a lot of political debate in some countries, and the U.S. was kind of maybe one of the worst places in the world. And you saw the differences of countries where all the parties would say, you know, this has been approved by the regulators, clinical studies have been done, you should get your, 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 your vaccines and so on. You could see some countries where you had scientific debate and political debate, and social media, if you had those three things, the vaccine rate were very, very low. Once again, straight from the horse's mouth, Moderna CEO. He is not a fan of scientific debate, not a fan of political debate, not a fan of social media, which those three things to me are, I think, essential building blocks of healthy discourse that will help us arrive at a sound public policy consensus. But to him, none of that matters at all. The only thing that matters to them is if they can sell their product to you. That's it. You exist to consume, and all other purposes of your existence to them is a nuisance. To be honest, you are invisible to them unless you do something that will affect their material wealth. So the only way to make working people visible is through collective labor actions, strikes, boycotts, things like that. Things that they respond to with an iron fist. In 2022, union membership rate has dropped to a historic low of just 10% of wage and salary workers. That is not a coincidence, is it? According to the Economic Policy Institute, in 2022, more than 60 million workers wanted to join a union but couldn't. 60 million more union members. That would make workers visible, wouldn't it? That would be quite the reckoning for the ruling class, wouldn't it? But for now, Layoffs? Don't bother us about that. We are enjoying our Sting concert. So whatever the issue, you can be sure that for the most part, you are probably invisible to the ruling class unless you make yourself visible. That's all for me today, how the ruling class really sees or doesn't see the working class. If you are upset about the current system like I am, just something to think about. Hopefully you will find this discussion helpful in terms of driving solutions. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments section below. Also, I'm sure that this video will not be well appreciated by the algo. So if you want to support my work, please like this video, share it, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell icon so we can stay in touch with each other. As always, thank you for your time today and I'll see you next week.